Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Monday, October 26, 2015. I am Dave Biddle, and I'm happy to be joined by Steve Hellwagon. Steve, the Buckeyes are 8-0, 4-0 in the Big Ten, number one in the country. Let's hand out some midseason grades. We'll go position by position, starting with the offense. At quarterback, Steve, what grade do you give the Buckeyes thus far? Oh, man, that's a tough one. I'm going to say probably a B-plus, I would say, and, and maybe I'm grading on a little bit of a curve. I don't know. Um, I mean, it was so up and down easily in the season, and, and since then they've really done a great job, uh, particularly J.T. Barrett the last several weeks has just been outstanding. So, yeah, I would say probably a B-plus to an A-minus, and, and obviously uh, the potential is there uh, for, for them to do even better, I think, uh, down the stretch, obviously, now that JT has taken the job over. But, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see uh, what, what direction things go the rest of the way. I had the same thing written down, Steve. I had B+. Plus. I'm, I'm right with you. And maybe I'm being a little nice as well, but I just feel like um, you know, what we've seen so far, I think people have been overly critical. Overall, I give them a B plus, and by the end of the season, I think we're going to give uh, the quarterbacks an A. I love the Move to JT Bear. I'm glad that, that Coach Meyer was able to take your advice and go with JT as the, as the red zone quarterback and then go with JT as a starting quarterback. I feel like you helped uh, move this process along a little bit, Steve. So good job well, by Coach Hellwagon. Running back, same question. What grade do you give the running backs a little more than halfway through the season? Uh, I'm afraid that's got to be an A, I would say. I think that uh, Ezekiel Elliott obviously <laughs> – uh, a or A minus, I would say. I mean, he he's got a chance to be a Heisman finalist. He's already ahead of his uh, pace uh, from last year. He's averaging 141 yards a game. Uh, he pulled there behind out of the fire in the Indiana game with the three long runs. That very easily could have been a loss had he not, uh, you know, basically stood on his head that night. And obviously the offensive line is doing a great job for him. Uh, he's in position to set a new OSU single season rushing record. If he stays on this pace, it would happen in week 14 or game 14, whatever that may be. So, yeah, very interesting to see what happens here down the stretch with Elliott, who, uh, as we all know, is not going to be in the scarlet and gray next year. That's right. Enjoy it while he lasts, Buckeye fans. He uh, will be going pro and be a first-round pick, and he will go down as one of the top three running backs in Ohio State history, in my opinion, and that is saying a lot. I know that. It's running back you, in my opinion, and – he will go down as one of the top three. I, I'm with you. I, same thing, I, I wrote all these down beforehand. I have A for the running backs. It's Ezekiel Elliott's show. He is a A-plus running back, and uh, I give the running backs an A. I would give them an A-plus if it was just Ezekiel, but, you know, the other guys, I think they've done a good job. I think, you know, Briante Dunn, when he's had a chance, has done a good job. Overall, I give the running backs an A. Moving to the wide receivers, a group that's been depleted with depth. Um, a lot of injuries at the wide receiver spot, but they've been enhanced by some guys moving into that role, like Braxton Miller and some others. Steve, what is your grade for the wide receivers a little more than halfway through the season? I'm going to call it a C plus. Uh, I think they've had some great moments, but uh, the blocking early on was not what uh, Urban Meyer wanted. And you've got uh, converted guys like Jalen Marshall, Braxton Miller, Curtis Samuel, Dontre Wilson, all trying to play there. Michael Thomas has been outstanding. Uh, he's now over 30 catches, I believe, uh, for the year with uh, five or six touchdowns. He's done great. I think um, what's unfortunate is they do not have uh, – they have not brought up any of the young guys. Paris Campbell's been banged up. James Clark, Terry McLaurin, Johnny Dixon's been banged up. Um, you know, those are the true receivers in the future of this position. We're eight games into the season, and none of them's made one play yet. So, uh, you know, I think that that is very distressing, very troubling, and obviously losing Noah Brown, who was so promising, and Corey Smith, the injuries really hurt. Um, they're doing the best they can. They're patching it together. But, uh, you know, I just think at times uh, no one's been open, and, uh, you know, they're doing the best they can with it. You and I will mildly disagree for a change, although you make very good points. I wrote down a B for the wide receivers. I don't think they've played great, but at the same time, 
I think now with JT Barrett as the quarterback, they're going to be able to settle in. They've had a lot of injuries. Overall, I give them a B. I think Michael Thomas is playing at an A level and will continue to play at an A level. The other guys are trying to catch up to him. So overall, I give the wide receivers a B. All right, last offensive position, we're going to mix the tight ends in with the offensive line. Offensive line slash tight ends, what grade do you give them, Steve? Oh, I'd say B-plus and trending northward is what I would say. I think they had some uneven moments early in the season. I think Taylor Decker and Pat Elfline have raised their level of play. I mean, there were a lot of pre-snap penalties early on. Uh, If you broke it out and looked at the tight ends, all you can really grade those guys on is their blocking because uh, the quarterbacks, uh, they can't find them with a search party. They're not even part of the offensive uh, game plan, it doesn't seem. Don't even seem to be viable receiving threats at this point. I don't think Marcus (laughs) Baugh has caught uh, one pass, and Vanette's probably got about nine or ten in uh, eight games. So, yeah, they're not even really involved. But, you know, you look at what uh, this team has done, uh, only allowed, I want to say, eight or nine sacks all season, and also in the top 20 nationally in rushing offense, uh, you know, geez, that, those, those are good numbers on both fronts, and uh, the Buckeyes are uh, doing a great job up front, and it's getting better each week. Obviously, uh, 38 points against the great Penn State defense last week. And then, of course, uh, the 49 against Rutgers. So uh, the offensive line, the tight ends, doing very well and a chance to uh, you know raise that up to an A- in the second half here. I agree with you, Steve. I wrote down B+. Plus. Once again, we're in lockstep. I think this is a group that has A-plus potential, as you said. Four returning starters on the offensive line. Then at tight end, Nick Vanette. You know, really, um, with Jeff Hireman suffering the injury late in the postseason, he was really the starting tight end during the postseason for Ohio State, at least during the, the Sugar Bowl and then the national championship game. So in the college football playoff, really Nick Vanette was the starter because of that ankle injury to Hireman. You know, I think he's starting to, to you know, catch his stride a little bit. And, and Marcus Ball, that's been a nice story. I think a lot of people wrote off Marcus Ball. And he's not just playing a little bit. You know, he even started the game in, the, in that two tight end set. So I think this offensive line is going to continue to play better and better, as you mentioned Taylor Decker and Pat Elfline are playing at All-American level, so I'm with you. I have a B-plus for the offensive line slash tight ends. All right, let's move to the defense. Defensive line, Steve, what grade do you give the big ones up front so far? I'm going to call it an A-minus. I think that they've done a great job. Uh, Joey Bosa and Adolphus Washington and Taekwon Lewis, those three in particular have been outstanding the last several weeks. Sam Hubbard has filled in and, and done very well. Tommy Shutt made a play or two before he got hurt against Penn State and had his wrist surgery, and you hope that he comes back. And then they've mixed in some of the young guys, you know, later on, Jalen Holmes, Michael Hill, Tracy Sprinkle. Those guys all got to play uh, from where I could sit uh, in the game this past weekend at Rutgers. So, yeah, lot, lot, lot to like here. Um, you know, a unit that uh, is basically uh, controlling the line of scrimmage and pressuring the quarterbacks. Five sacks against Penn State was outstanding. And uh, Bosa, he had another big sack against Maryland and another tackle for loss. He is starting to play again at that all-Big Ten, all-American level. So I'm going to call that an A-. minus, And uh, you just have to hope they can continue to keep it going. Jeez, you and I, it's like we compared notes beforehand. A-, minus. I also have for the defensive line. This is amazing. Three-fourths of the defensive line, I would give it A+. plus. That one tech, they still don't have it locked down. That is what brings down the grade a little bit. I, I bring it down from an A-plus to an A-minus because of that one tech, that nose guard position. Tommy Shutt was playing okay, wasn't playing great. Maybe he wasn't even playing good, but was at least playing solid. Then he goes down, they put Joel Hale in there as the starter. He wasn't playing well. Mike Hill gets the brunt of the playing time. They need to figure out something at that one tech, and it feels like to me, Steve, the stars are aligning for this Rushman package to really be their bread and butter as we go down the stretch. When they're playing Michigan State, when they're playing Michigan, I look for Joey Bosa to move inside, Sam Hubbard to come in at defensive end. That seems to be their best alignment up front, get those four best defensive linemen on the field. But, yeah, I have them as an A-minus thus far. Let's move to the linebacker position. Steve, what is your grade for the linebackers eight games through the season? I'm going to call this a B plus. I think that uh, Darren Lee and Joshua Perry have both been uh, saddled with, it appears, ankle injuries on both fronts. Darren Lee did not break any bones, apparently, in his leg or his ankle, but uh, has been hobbled. I think it's pretty clear the last few weeks he's not made those game-changing plays that we all became accustomed to. And Joshua Perry, 
he left the game at Rutgers. Uh, his uh, foot was in basically an ice boot, his right foot. So he's got some type of an ankle problem ongoing as well. And I think that's helped those guys back from being uh, all Big Ten players this year. Uh, Raquan McMillan has done a bang-up job, although I think a lot of people would say that some of the stuff that he's done has been down, down the field as opposed to impacting plays at the line of scrimmage or in the backfield. So um, I think these guys can play better, but, again, it's the open week, and the important thing is to get healthy, and uh, the Buckeyes need those two guys, Lee and Perry, to get healthy and get back to where they were. I think room for improvement. I'm going to call it a B-plus right now. I have him just a little bit under you. I have him as a solid B so far. Darren Lee, as you mentioned, he has not been the same player. I think for the first time he started to show it against Rutgers a couple nights ago, started to show that fast twitch Darren Lee that we all know of, that uh, that playmaker that was just so unbelievably good as a redshirt freshman on the national championship team. So I'd look for him to finish the year strong. Josh Perry's banged up. So I bring the grade down a little bit because of injuries. That might not be fair. Raekwon McMillan, I want to love him. I love his attitude. I love his athletic ability. I still feel like there's so much room for growth with him. I, I, I'm not down on the way he's playing. I just feel like he can play better. And he's only a sophomore, and he's not a redshirt sophomore. Is it just his second year in the program? So I do look for Raekwon McMillan to get better. I'm not saying he's playing bad. I just see sometimes where he gets, gets lost in the play, maybe a little too easy to block. I just uh, have so uh, such high expectations for him. I think Raekwon McMillan can play a little better. Uh, I do have the linebackers at a solid B right now. All right, the secondary, Steve Hellwagon, the defensive backs, what grade do you give them thus far? I'm going to call them an A-. Uh, I think this has been one of the best position groups on the team, right up there with the running back uh, position group of one. I think the uh, – the idea that uh, there's four of these guys, Von Bell, Tyvis Powell at the safeties, and obviously Gary Conley and Eli Apple at uh, the corners, uh, I would give the safeties an A and probably the corners a B plus, so it averages out to an A minus. I think what brings it down is Eli Apple's had some penalties. Uh, Gary and Conley as a first year starter has been nothing short of sensational. He had the block punt in an interception this past week against Rutgers. And, uh, Von Bell and Tyvis Powell, I mean, they've, they've let some plays get out the box there a little bit. But on the whole, I mean, geez, at the beginning of the season, I thought that those two guys, uh, were playing as well as any, uh, safety tandem in the country. So, uh, it's been a little bit up and down with them. But again, uh, veterans and they're all playing well. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, even, uh, you know, one of, one of the defensive players, I think it was, uh, Darren Lee after the game says he considers those guys to be, uh, NFL caliber corners and they've done, whether it's uh, Penn State's guys or Rutgers, Leonte Carew, or whoever it may be, they've done a, a really a bang-up job. I think Braverman uh, was the one guy from Western Michigan who got a few plays on him, but, you know, geez, when they, they throw the ball his way 20 times a game, it, it's not uh, not that easy to stop somebody. Uh, but uh, they've done very well, and uh, Ohio State's passing efficiency defense how they rate that with the rating points, it's in the top ten easily in the country, and they proved it again against Laviano and Rutgers this past week. I give the secondary a B. I'm a little lower on them than you are. I think they have potential to be excellent, and I expect more out of them. Uh, Gary on Conley has been the one, I don't know if it's a surprise, but he's been the guy that's really played above expectations, in my opinion. He was the guy coming into the season, the only new starter in that secondary and you know there was a lot of questions about his physicality how would he tackle and i thought i think he's done a great job tackling in fact that's not a worry at all i think gary on conley's played very well eli apple can play much better and i think he's going to be a future nfl corner i agree with darren lee i think both guys conley and apple are future nfl corners and they're only third year sophomores so that's very exciting for your buckeye fans he's just still young guys that are going to get better and i know eli apple is going to finish this season strong but i think he has not played as well as he could have uh, you know, through the first eight games. I expect him to play better. Tyvis Powell, I'm still seeing too many mistakes. Not this past game. I thought he played pretty solid against Rutgers, but still taking too many bad angles, giving up too many big plays. So overall, I think the DBs are playing well, but I will not give them an A. I give them a B. I still see some deficiencies there. So I give the secondary a B at this stage. All right, our final grade to hand out, Steve. Special teams, we're going to lump them all together. What grade do you give the special teams eight games through the season? I'm going to call that a B. It's been a mixed bag. Cameron Johnston as the punter is having an All-American season and uh, averaging 
around 46, 47 yards, and Ohio State's in the top 10 nationally in net punting. So that's going very well. I think the return game, there's definite room for improvement. They really haven't broken a big one yet that would help them. I think Marshall did have like a 29-yard punt return against Rutgers. That was good to see. And he's come close a couple times to hitting that seam and bringing one back. The coverage units are very good. Uh, the uh, I don't have the stat right in front of me, but I think the longest punt return is 14 yards, and the longest kick return that they've allowed is like 28 or 30, something like that, which are phenomenal. When you think that's the long, that's not the average, that's the longest returns they've allowed, and of course uh, they're kicking off into the end zone quite a bit. Um, Jack Willoughby, you know, what can you say? He's steady, probably something like 7 of 10 on field goals, but, you know, he hasn't really made one of much distance yet. So, again, he needs to, I guess, keep working at it, and you just have to hope a game doesn't come down to a field goal where they need him to put one in, and it probably will. Michigan, Michigan State, the Big Ten Championship game or a playoff game or whatever could come down to that. So I guess we'll see. How he responds at that time, I think that pretty much uh, covers it all. The the coverage teams have been great. Uh, the return teams can improve, and Johnston's been outstanding. Will it be so so? So I just said a B. I give him a B plus. Uh, I'm with you. I think Willoughby is the one that, that brings the grade down, and I like him. He's got a strong leg, and they say he's accurate in practice. It's not like he's just a guy that has a strong leg that's completely erratic. He it's a small sample size with him, but. That's the only sample size that we have with him, and he has not been very good on field goals. I'm with you. If they need a, a last-second field goal at Michigan to win the game, I mean, you're going to be nervous anyway. If you had Mike Nugent in his prime, you'd be nervous. Uh, with Jack Willoughby, of course you're going to be nervous. So he brings the grade down. He's had a few kicks go out of bounds. And I think no matter who the kickoff specialist is at Ohio State, you're going to have some kicks go out of bounds just because they take a risk. They try and pin teams deep and really go for that coffin corner kickoff. So I give him a little bit of a pass on that, but still, he brings the grade down. I love the rest of the special teams. I love Jalen Marshall as a punt returner, 19th in the country. I love Cam Johnson as a punter. Probably going to be first-team All-American or at least second or third-team All-American this year. So overall, and I like the way they cover kicks and punts. So I really like what I'm seeing on special teams. I will give them a B+. Plus. Great stuff out of Steve Hellwagon. Just a reminder, with this being the bye week, there is no Urban Meyer press conference today. So, again, no Urban Meyer press luncheon today. The next time we'll get a chance to speak with Coach Meyer will be on the Big Ten teleconference tomorrow afternoon on the Big Ten teleconference. And then we will get players after practice on Wednesday. No Urban Meyer on Wednesday either. And then you'll have his call-in show on Thursday. So those are the schedule of events for this week. Thanks again to Steve Hellwagon, and thanks to you for tuning into the show. I appreciate it, and hope you have a great day. Take it away, best damn band in the land.